Hello viewers, this is Paladin of Odin, and this is some more Magic the Gathering Online. This is another episode of the Standard Commentary Series. Second turn, Hangerback Walker. And a third turn, Jace. Okay, for a second there I was like, is he stuck on two land? Fiery Impulse to get rid of the Hangerback Walker. And map the wastes. I don't know, it seems to me like people are playing awfully slow lately. Planar Outburst. It just seems like it's taking much longer than it should to get from action to action. Sanctum of Ugin. Hmm. This is pilgrimage. Okay, I guess uh, this is a ramp deck. Green and black, though, which is interesting. That's a new one for me. But I've seen everything else. Green, blue, green, white, green, red. Crackling Doom to get rid of the token. But, I mean, back to what I was saying, I guess it was only a matter of time before it was there was a green-black ramp version. And Dragon Master Outcast. He's one man is short, or one land short for the Outcast. Six mana. Can you see what I mean? What's taking so long? Grip of Desolation. Exile target creature and target land. He is running blue, so theoretically he could counter this. Disdainful Stroke would be good. Um, negate. Silumgar's Scorn wouldn't be good because he doesn't have a dragon, or at least not that we know of. Uh, what is that? Scatter to the Winds would be good. Discards Kolagon's Command. Mm -hmm. Taps for mana. The grip of desolation goes off. Utter end on the hangerback walker. And exile. Uh, that doesn't help. <laughs> it's exile. One exile for one exile. Well, technically, two exiles. Mm. Ramp deck 
decks at 7 mana. The Dark Jeskai deck is now on 4 mana, which really sucks for him. 5, 8 mana for Ugin. Is he going to sacrifice the Sanctum? Doesn't get a chance. The Dark Jeskai deck conceded. I don't know that I would have, because it doesn't seem to me like it was impossible to come back from that. I mean, an unres you know, unable to respond to an Ugin is bad, but he's not the end of the world. He can be. But I don't really see him being the end of the world in that situation. But then again, I am really stubborn and I don't I don't like to concede. Soulfire Grandmaster. Theoretically, she's a very, very good card. But at the same time, I never see her live up to the potential of what she can do. I hardly ever see a burn spell when she's in play. You know, I never get to see... Well, not never. Hardly ever. Very, very limited experience with seeing things like Exquisite Firecraft having lifelink. Mastery of the Unseen. And in even rarer instances, seeing the pay for mana ability. Map the Wastes, no creature. It's unfortunate when you have to do things like that, but you have to do it. Playing a ramp deck, the point is to get out a bunch of land early. And explosive vegetation. I am surprised that he doesn't have a land to play from his hand. And he did. Plighted Fen. And manifest off of mastery. This is a pretty slow start for the uh, for any ramp deck. Five, six, seven mana. He could have eight if he plays the land from his hand right now. Hey, there's eight. And Grip of Desolation gets rid of Soulfire Grandmaster and the Blue Black Land. The land part, I I have to be honest, I don't really see how helpful that is. Except in the last game, when you basically followed up putting him on four land with playing Ugin. He's at eight. 
eight. This is getting really close. Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Oblivion Sower. I've been seeing him more often lately. I mean, he's not the greatest card, but at the same time, in a ramp deck, you're going to get to six mana quite easily. And his body of five eight is really hard to deal with. And then the possibility of stealing lands from them is quite, you know, quite a boost. I mean, he just got two free lands, which helps his end goal. He, he basically has all the mana he could possibly need right now. So, I mean... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 mana. He can basically play anything, period. Crackling Doom to get rid of the Oblivion Sower. And he concedes. Utter and Jace and Infinite Obliteration. I just love the name of that card. It sounds so epic. But that was Dark Jeskai versus a ramp deck. Oh. oh, I'm an idiot. I thought the match was over. But now that I'm thinking about it, is it Jund? Is it a Jund ramp deck? Or is it a Golgari ramp deck with red mana? I mean, we haven't seen him play anything red. But, you know, there's nothing saying he doesn't have red cards in his sideboard. And he's just main decking the mountains, because why not? Hang your back, Walker. Mastery of the Unseen. Shrine of Forsaken Gods. Dragon Master Outcast. Buff up the Walker. This is actually a pretty bad start for the ramp deck. He has no green mana. I mean, he does have two 2-2 two, two hanger back walkers, but... You know, all the ramp is green. If this keeps up, his deck will be very off the curve for what he wants to do. One, two, three, four, five. Five for a colorless spell. Hedron Archive. Which I have a feeling he's probably going to have to immediately sacrifice next turn to draw. Unless, of course, he draws a forest. Manifest the top card. Six cards in the hand. Hmm. 
I forgot about that. I guess he can buff up both of his walkers. Green mana? Doesn't look like it. He's swinging in with one walker. And manifest. Either chump block with one manifest or just take the three damage. Why give him three 1 1 flyers that you can't block when you can continually block his XX? And he has enough land for the Dragon Master outcast. And he doesn't sacrifice the Hedron Archive. He finally gets a green mana. But is it too late? Map the Wastes. Mastery of the Unseen. Flips over. Well, let me get this straight. He flips Jace, which activates Mastery of the Unseen to gain him a life. And discards Bloodstained Mire, which he doesn't really need right now. I mean, the only threat to his mana base is Grip of Desolation. Or Ulamog. Hmm. I'm surprised he didn't get another green mana. Unless he needed the other black for Grip of Desolation. Crackling Doom? No, Manifest. Yeah, why would you Crackling Doom to give him four 1-1s? One but he jump blocks with the Manifest token, which was a negate. And time to start making 5-5 five, five Flyers. Jace will flip this time. And he doesn't have a good target for his minus three, so he'll just have to plus two. Or plus one, excuse me. Unless he plays something this turn, which he could then minus three and copy. Or flashback, excuse me. Man, I just can't keep things straight. But what are you going to do? I mean, you're in a decent position. Though you have to expect that Grip of Desolation is coming at you next turn. Because why would he need another black mana? We haven't seen him play anything else that needed to black mana. Infinite Obliteration. And he picks Ulamog.
three copies. I've always wondered about what is the most efficient number of Ulamogs and things like that in a deck like this. You know, is three enough? Do you really want to put four in? I mean, I can't really see two being enough. And he's attacking. Okay. He does have the four mana to manifest. And ruinous path. Hmm. I guess that's the other card that needs to black. Lighted Woodland to get two basic lands. And buff up that walker. And swing. I would have thought it would have been better to swing right there. I mean, big deal if he blocks, you get four one ones. If he doesn't block, you get through to either his face or Jace. Or, if he wanted to block with the Manifest token, you kill a Manifest token so that he doesn't continually build up his army. That's. One of the big benefits of Hangerback Walker is when it dies, it gives you a bunch of 1-1 one, one flyers. Which can then, depending on the board state, either chump block, which you can't do right now, or tack in mass and get through. I mean, he has one blocker that can block flying. You would have had four 1-1 one, one flyers. Delving for dig through time. Minus two on the big walker. Okay, so Ulamog's out of the way. Ah, he's using the plus two, so Ugin? And he's, yep, he sacks the sanctum. And gets Oblivion Sower. And Disdainful Stroke. Goodbye, Ugin. And another Map the Wastes. So now he has two five five walkers, but they really is it it is an interesting situation. He oh, utter end. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting him to make another manifest token and chump block. I was going to say, it's an interesting situation, 
because he's got a 5-5 five five that just continually is getting through, and the hangerback walkers are just getting jammed up by manifest tokens. And he could minus three Jace and utter end the other hangerback walker. That would be nine damage, so he'd be at three. This is basically at the breaking point. I'm pretty sure that the Dark Jeskai deck has this game and match. And he only minus twos him. Does he have an ace up his sleeve? It looks like Ugin. No, it's Oblivion Sower. I forgot. Uh, Sanctum of Ugin. Let him get that. I don't think that that's good enough. Wow, that is a lot of lands he just got. But, um... They're all... They're all... Almost all of them are <laughs> fetch lands. Superwood Elemental. Not going to save you. Oh, he just manifested in, uh... He conceded. Okay. One of his manifests was a Great Aurora. Interesting. His deck is quite odd. But as you can see, it... I don't want to say it's a bad deck. But it's too complicated. He's trying to do too many things. I mean, I can understand wanting to throw in the black so that you can kill stuff. But, you know, the other decks are streamlined and they work just fine. You know, the other ramp decks. So, it's possible he could streamline this deck and it might work out better. Or he could just go to the other established color sets of the ramp deck and do much better. So that was Dark Jeskai versus, I'll call it Golgari Ramp. And if you liked what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button for me, and I'll see you in the next video.